So the next problem, or over here, is what I'm going to use is what we call the factor theorem. And what we can say is, if I can, if I can, if I can do f of, um, let's just call z as in 0, and I get 0, that means x minus z is a factor. So if I can plug in a value and I get 0 as the remainder, or 0 as the value, what that does is that tells me that that's a factor. It's kind of very similar to the remainder theorem. If you plug in a number and you get 0, then that tells you that number is a 0, correct? That's what we proved over there. And it's easy to compare between zeros and factors because we've been doing this for a very long time. Factors, zeros. Zeros, factors. Remember on your last quiz, I gave you zeros and I said write the equation? What do we have to do? We had to take our zeros, write them as factors, and then we can multiply them, right? In solving, we take a polynomial, we factor it out so we have factors, and then we apply the zero product property to find the zeros. So zeros and factors are very closely correlated. So the remainder theorem and the factor theorem are very closely correlated. Basically what it's saying is, if you plug in a value and you get zero, that value is the zero, which is the remainder theorem. And the factor theorem is if you write that zero as a factor, then it's a factor as long as it equals zero. So if we're asking, if I'm saying my factor is x minus 1, then my zero is x equals 1. So what this is saying is if I plug in 1 into my function and I get zero, then this is a factor. So all we need to do for this is plug in f of 1. So I get 2 minus 3 plus 4 minus 1. And my answer is 2, right? No. Negative 3, 1, yep. So therefore, it is not a factor. Could you have also just done long division? Sure, absolutely, not a problem. 